This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Gainesville is my home. It's been my home since I came here for college in 2008. We're a diverse, inclusive, welcoming city, and we do not want him or his rhetoric here stirring things up and making anyone feel like they're not welcome in our society. White nationalist Richard Spencer speaking at the University of Florida today. Hundreds of protesters, plenty of security and law enforcement. Where do we draw the line in the right to free speech? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We begin tonight with one of the best-known leaders in the white supremacist movement, Richard Spencer, speaking at the University of Florida this afternoon and the concern after Charlottesville about the potential things could get out of control. There were hundreds of protesters, but also plenty of law enforcement to ensure there was no violent clashes between white nationalists who attended and protesters. The protesters had a message for Spencer that he was not welcome in Gainesville. Gainesville is my home. It's been my home since I came here for college in 2008. We're a diverse, inclusive, welcoming city, and we do not want him or his rhetoric here stirring things up and making anyone feel like they're not welcome in our society because we're all welcome. And it's important for me to, you know, make it clear that my relatives fought to prevent this from happening, and I shouldn't have to still be fighting it today in 2017. We will have much more on the story in a moment when we are joined by ABC 7's Christopher Brantley in Gainesville. If you are a parent of a kid in Sarasota schools, this is not what you want to hear. Several schools today were placed on lockdown after a student brought a gun on a school bus. The Riverview High School student and his friend were caught at the SCAT bus station in downtown Sarasota. Both were taken into custody for questioning. This comes just 24 hours after parents were alerted to an alleged rape near Riverview High. All students and staff are safe. Sarasota County Schools sent a robocall to parents this morning, letting them know that a Riverview High student had shown a gun and bullets on a school bus. The name of the scary student. Until I knew what was actually going on, that they have like everything under control, you know. It's definitely nerve wracking. You know, like it's in our area, and this is like something super serious, and like. It's happening, you know, but thankfully everyone's okay and no one got hurt and they have everything under control, you know. The name of the student has not been released. If only every governor of Florida was as wealthy as Rick Scott, as he pointed out today, Scott is fulfilling a campaign promise to sell the state's two jet aircraft for almost $3.8 million. The planes had been used to fly previous governors from location to location, but Scott made extensive use of his private jet to travel the Sunshine State, often making multiple stops in a single day. The governor is going to focus on how they can get more jobs in the state. It's still, even though we've done well, we're you know over 1.4 million jobs. It's it's still the number one issue you can do for a family besides their education and keeping them safe. Scott wouldn't say if he'd sign a budget which included money for a new aircraft for the next governor. When will Congress pass an aid package to help hurricane victims in Puerto Rico and elsewhere? Florida Senator Marco Rubio met with the governor of Puerto Rico today and says the time to vote on aid is now and he's hopeful it will happen sooner rather than later. They can't wait 60, 90, 180 days to, to get the money. It's great that there's a bunch of money sitting there in a pot of money ready to help with assistance. But if their ability to get a hold of that money and use it is going to require a three-month process, then it's not going to do a lot of good. And in the case... There has been a lot of work done, and we've uh, recognized that, but there's still a lot of work uh, uh, to go ahead. There's Rosello later went on to meet with President Trump to discuss relief for Puerto Rico. Cities across the country are trying to convince Amazon to locate the company's second headquarters to their community, and that includes two cities on the Sun Coast. The Bradenton Area Economic Development Corporation president is offering two sites to Amazon. One is in Lakewood Ranch. The other is in North Manatee County. The new facility for the online giant could generate up to 50,000 jobs. Tonight is the deadline to make an offer to Amazon, through a, uh, though a decision is not expected until next year. A joint plea from the Sarasota Police Department and the DEA. The public is being asked to 
They bring expired medication and pills to the front lobby of the Sarasota Police Department or any of the addresses shown on your screen. The DEA cannot accept liquids for needles, only pills and, or patches. The drop-offs will address a vital public safety and public health issue. Drop-offs are safer than what many people do with old prescription drugs, like flushing them down the toilet or throwing them into the trash, which both pose potential safety and health hazards. A bicycle stolen from a visually impaired para-athlete has been found. The bicycle was stolen in October and was located by someone in Sarasota on Wednesday afternoon. He called the Sarasota Police Department after recognizing the picture of the bike on the ABC7 Facebook page. Sarasota police officers are working to contact the victim who is back home in Chile and will make arrangements to return the bicycle to him. A great day, great weather, not too warm, not too cold, Bob. And that was a great story, too, yeah. right there, Alan. I'll tell you, we are looking at some decent weather this evening. It was a little bit on the warm side this afternoon. Highs did get into the upper 80s uh, to low 90s. That's above average, and no real threat of any significant rainfall around. Gorgeous sunset tonight, looking out on Sarasota Bay toward the Ringling Bridge. The Titan radar picture indicating a few showers, mainly along the east coast this afternoon. There were a few down to our south as well. That old frontal boundary just kind of hanging around down there, but fading away uh, 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 slowly but surely. Uh, currently, Sarasota Braden Airport, it's 82, clear skies. The temperatures drop down to 82 degrees right now, which is nice. The humidity is fairly low at 65%. We like that east to northeast wind. Keeps the humidity values really low, and the pressure is rising now at 30.02 inches. Temperatures across the area, now it's still pretty warm at this time, uh, at this hour, for this matter. You can see 82 degree water temperature, but uh, the Northport area, 84, they were at 91 today, and 82 in Arcadia. Wachula was up in the low 90s. Uh, this morning's lows were comfortable, upper 60s to low 70s, but still above average. Uh, we're going to see that uh, drop below it by midweek next week. Here's a look at the evening planner. If you're heading out, 74, clear skies by 11 o'clock tonight. And if you have a jog plan or you also have a, maybe a bike ride or a tennis match late, it looks to be okay, not a big problem. Dry air is in place right now, covering most of the Gulf of Mexico, not a lot going on there. And if we see any rainfall tomorrow, it'll be the light variety. And that's good news because we've had a very hard football Friday night this season. But now it looks like it'll be three weeks in a row that we'll be able to get that football Friday night in on Friday. Right time of the year. That's right. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. And still to come, white nationalist Richard Spencer speaks at the University of Florida. Protesters were present. We'll have more when we come back. Stay with us. Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make a splash! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USASwimmingFoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. 
Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. ABC7, your official Florida lottery station for the Sun Coast. White supremacist Richard Spencer spoke at the University of Florida today, an event that sparked Governor Rick Scott to preemptively declare a state of emergency. Security was high at the event, and protesters gathered on campus. Omar Jimenez has the latest from Gainesville. A verbal demonstration by protesters during a speech by white supremacist Richard Spencer at the University of Florida. Well, I'm not going home. You know that what I am saying is going to change the world, and therefore, you all want to stop it. You're going to fail. While protesters marched on campus outside the event, Governor Rick Scott has declared a state of emergency for Alachua County following requests from local law enforcement. The university has also ramped up security, spending an estimated $600,000 on safety precautions. We're taking the equivalent of a thousand tuitions and investing in security because of his followers. All moves in hopes of avoiding the deadly events that unfolded in Charlottesville in August. One woman was killed and more than a dozen injured when a car plowed through a group of counter protesters demonstrating against a white nationalist rally. Some schools have since refused to host Spencer out of security concerns. Back in August, the University of Florida originally declined Spencer's request to speak due to threats of violence, but allowed today's event stressing the school's commitment to free speech. I think in reality, uh, his words have absolutely no value. The one thing that comes out of this, though, is that it's prompting a great discussion around race and religion and the value of a diversity of that on a university campus. In Gainesville, Florida, I'm Omar Jimenez. In the aftermath of Charlottesville, UF initially denied Spencer's request to speak. He threatened to sue. The school relented. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley joins us from Gainesville with reaction. Christopher. Good evening to you. you know things are really calming down out here right now. They were quite spirited earlier today. A lot of protesters showed up in response to this speech. There were a lot of chanting. Uh, there was a lot of chanting. There was a lot of there was a whole lot of uh, signs being held up. Some of it did get, as I said, a little bit spirited. There were a couple of small altercations. For the most part, things were relatively calm. We did hear a couple of people were punched in the face, but that seems to be relatively calm for what could have been out here all heavy police presence now back out here we will be speaking to a transgender rights activist in just a few moments who attended the event we'll see what they have to say about their feelings of richard spencer coming up in just a few moments alan back to you christopher thank you coming up an extraordinary trapezoid freedom of speech versus hate speech the acl aclu representatives of the jewish community join us at the trapezoid Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe ten thousand dollars or more upon payment of your new lower balance your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free my family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20 percent interest there's no fees until you see results so call now make one monthly program payment and free up your cash resolve your debt call 800-685-6422 800-685-6422 Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Many people with Medicare may be able to get extra benefits and don't even know they're available. You may be able to get dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage included in your plan. 
Call the Medicare Coverage Helpline to see if you can get the extra benefits you deserve. The Medicare Coverage Helpline is now accepting calls. You may be able to get extra benefits, including dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Buckwald. Making sure you go to the doctor and taking all your medications as prescribed can help protect your health. To make it easier, you may now be able to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that includes coverage for dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Help protect your health by choosing the right plan for you and get all the benefits you deserve. Call to see if you may be able to get extra benefits, including dental, vision, and prescription coverage. Don't miss the annual election period deadline for Medicare Advantage. Call now. Call 800-711-7200. That's 800-711-7200. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. Welcome back. What should we make of Richard Spencer's appearance today at the University of Florida? A reminder, the forces of hate, white supremacy, racism, anti-Semitism, bigotry are not only still present in America, they are in fact empowered these days. And that's why we need to be aware and on guard. Or is it a pathetic dribble from a hate monger yearning for relevancy? Is it the best way to deal with Richard Spencer and his ilk to ignore them or to let them speak? Because his right to, under the First Amendment, is a testament not only to his perverted sense of reality, but rather to our dedication to the First Amendment, the right to free speech, enjoyed by all Americans, a principle, unlike Spencer, real men and women died for. Joining us for more is Michael Barfield of the American Civil Liberties Union, Howard Tevlowitz, uh, Executive Director of the Jewish Federation of Sarasota Manatee. And joining us from Gainesville is Sarasota resident Nate Quinn, who went to the protest, and our own Christopher Brantley. And Michael, let me start with you, because so many times you look at the feedback uh, that we get, and it is, why are, you ever, you know, why are we allowing somebody like this to speak? And you say what? Popular speech does not need protection. It's unpopular speech that needs protection. A light was focused on Richard Spencer and his racist bigotry today, and the First Amendment won, and people uh, saw him for the racist that he is. Uh, Howard, we saw the video out of Charlottesville, yeah. and to uh, many people, including Jewish Americans, it. it scared a lot of people because right. that it reminded you of n Nazi Germany 1930s. Correct. It's a situation that is really difficult for us, you know, dealing with free speech, which thank God we live in the United States. On the other hand, speech turns into action. And this is part of the problem we have to live through, which is the action that is a result of that speech, which happened in Charlottesville, and thank God did not happen today in Gainesville. Uh, Nate, in Gainesville, you have been on the forefront of a lot of civil liberty union uh, issues uh, here in the Sarasota area. Why did you go out to the protest today? I think it's important for people to see that Richard Spencer and his followers are not the majority. There are, you know, gay Americans, trans Americans, black Americans, a ton of people that, that know that what he's saying is just completely hateful and really, really disgusting and that he needs to know he is not the majority. Christopher, let me ask you this, especially in the aftermath of, of Charlottesville, there was a lot of concern about this speech and whether there would be violent clashes uh, like we saw on TV just a short few months ago. Um, I take it that things were, you know, heated today, but not like we saw in Charlottesville a couple of months ago. In comparison to Charlottesville, things were absolutely subdued. I mean, right now, things are very calm. We did have a whole lot of police that uh, came in from all across the state. We did see a lot of them that were wearing combat gear. Some of them were carrying uh, tear gas canisters on their side. Some of them were carrying large nightsticks. So they were very serious 
uh, in the way they were presenting themselves in, I would imagine, an effort to make sure that we don't have another situation like Charlottesville, which thankfully we did not happen, uh, did not happen today. Did you see any heated exchanges between those who were going there to watch Spencer speak and those protesting it? Oh, certainly. There was a, it was a little heated at times. I, I called it spirited uh, throughout the day. Uh, some protesters were there in support. I shouldn't say call them protesters. Some supporters were there in support of Richard Spencer. Some of them were carrying signs that were just uh, derogatory and not suitable for television. But when they got to the protesters, there was quite a few clashes. There was definitely some arguments that were going on. There were some uh, spirited conversations, too. I mean, they were trying to understand each other in a couple of different situations. I know I was standing with a member uh, of the alt-right movement who was trying to explain the way he feels, uh, his position in all of this. He said he doesn't agree with Richard Spencer and everything. But he was standing there with protesters trying to get them to understand his side of things as well. And Nate, we only have a couple of seconds left, but we saw somebody get killed in Charlottesville. Did you have any concern about your own personal safety? Um, I was worried about my safety and the safety of, you know, my friends that came to the protests. But I think that we did a lot of preparation in Gainesville to make sure that it wouldn't become as violent as Charlottesville and that protesters would be safe and that marginalized students would be safe whether they protested or stayed home. Okay, we are just getting warmed up and we'll have much more on today's events in Gainesville right after we check the first alert weather, so stay with us. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Our accredited staff will handle all of the Medicare paperwork for free. And best of all, your brace is shipped directly to your home for free. Don't let chronic lower back pain slow you down. Get moving and stay active with a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost. We also accept Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, and other insurance. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare? Find out for free. Call Back Brace America at 1-800-715-0835. That's 1-800-715-0835. 1-800-715-0835. Attention blood thinner users. If your loved one took Xarelto or Pradaxa and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. The widely prescribed blood thinners Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to a number of dangerous side effects, including internal bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, kidney bleeding, stroke, brain hemorrhaging, and even death. If you or a loved one suffered any of these injuries after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, call right now. You may be owed significant compensation from the menu. Manufacturer. Thousands of blood thinner users may have been exposed to serious risk by these dangerous medications. If you or loved one took Xarelto or Pradax and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. If we don't win, there is no fee. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-554-3987. Again, that's 1-800-554-3987. In life after the military, it's our duty as veterans to have each other's back. I'm retired Colonel Greg Gatson, and it's my mission to help you get the benefits and services you've earned. If you need to file a VA claim, remember these important steps. Submit an online claim through ebenefits.va.gov. Work with an accredited veteran service organization or VSO. And if you need to attend a VA claim exam, please go. Visit this website to learn what to expect. Our conversation on today's events in Gainesville continues right after we get a check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrod. Thanks, Alan. Casey Key is showing some uh, pretty nice beach weather today. Lots of sunshine out there, some fair weather cumulus clouds uh, dancing across the sky occasionally off toward the west. The winds have been out of the east and northeast, bringing some really nice weather in the morning at least for a couple of hours. And then things really heated up today. Highs were in the low 90s inland, upper 80s near the beaches, and a few showers along the east coast. What we have is an old frontal boundary. It's stationary. It's down to the south of us now, and it's weakening and it's fading away. 
it will eventually dissipate and high pressure continues to build in. Uh, no rain around the southeast United States with the exception of Florida and that's the direct result of that large area of high pressure sinking air which uh, causes uh, things to uh, stay pretty quiet. And as far as that easterly wind flow goes around that area of high pressure, it will stay with us too right through the day on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Things turn a little bit more out of the southeast in advance of a fairly significant cold front coming down early next week. 82 degrees, our current temperature under fair skies and the heat index not a factor. It was earlier though. Uh, feels like temperatures were in the mid 90s. East to northeast winds at 10 and the pressure now 30.02 inches. That is rising ever so slightly at this hour. The high today, well there it is, close to a record, just three degrees shy of the record high set back in 1971. This morning's low was at 70 and that too running above average for this time of year, although it felt nice because of that east to northeast wind. It has been uh, pretty dry this month of October so far, and the yearly total, though, will be above average regardless of what happens uh, over the upcoming two months as a result of it already above average at 61.43 inches. Typically, we see about 53 to 54 inches of rainfall a year. Now, the hourly forecast tomorrow showing no rain around, but temperatures warming into the upper 80s and partly cloudy skies by the afternoon. Should see plenty of sunshine in the morning. As a result of that large area of high pressure, those winds will stay brisk out of the northeast. Although the advisories have since expired for the coastal waters, it looks like uh, winds and seas will still be rather uh, elevated offshore, but not so much near shore. Those winds at times up to 18 to 19 miles an hour and even at 20 uh, tomorrow afternoon, but then subsiding somewhat during the evening hours, but still in play. And that northeast wind keeps that humidity down considerably, and that's what makes it feel so nice out there uh, during the morning. Even the upper 80s to low 90s does not feel nearly as bad as it does during the summer months. The uh, forecast, uh, this one again, the model a little overdone tonight, showing a little bit more activity around than uh, there is right now. And then overnight, fair. And then for tomorrow, just one or two lone sprinkles moving through quickly off toward the west. Saturday, things don't change much at all with that easterly component and high pressure still dominating our weather. And then uh, things start to transition as we move into early next week with the frontal boundary. In the tropics, all is quiet, but it's not over yet. And we are still going to have to watch and wait and see the uh, western Caribbean and uh, the southwestern Gulf of Mexico become the areas of concern in the latter half of the season. And some models, long range models are showing something popping up there. And there's something popping out west. Finally, some moisture moving into California and the Pacific Northwest. A lot of rainfall anticipated uh, for those areas. Now, the foreboders tomorrow, northeasterly winds still a little bit brisk at 15 knots. Seas will be 2 to 4 feet with a moderate chop. The water temperature at 82. And the UV index will be high. Uh, sunrise will be at 733. The forecast tonight, mostly fair, mild and breezy. And tomorrow, look for sunshine. Plenty of it, just a few clouds in the afternoon. High temperatures will top out in the upper 80s with a 20% chance for a few passing showers late in the day. It looks like a great weekend ahead, albeit on the warm side. And then we start to see a change as the front moves in on Tuesday, cools us down for Wednesday and Thursday. We're talking high temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Al will be back with his guests right after this. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. Consumer Cellular makes it easy to stay in touch with family and stay within our budget. Now our cell phone bill is only a fraction of what it used to be. Our average customers get everything they need for about $25 a month, and plans start at only $15 a month with no contracts. Consumer Cellular has a great choice of phones. Check out my new one. I picked this simple phone. I use my son's old smartphone. Kept my number, too. Consumer Cellular has been an approved AARP provider since 2008, and members get exclusive discounts. It's a good thing Consumer Cellular is always there, because sometimes I need a little help. Sometimes. We're proud to have received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service three times in a row. Over the years, we've seen a lot of change. We actually use change. Luckily, there are some things we can still afford. Like, like Consumer cellular. cellular. Stop paying too much for wireless service. Switch to Consumer Cellular. And with our 30-day risk-free guarantee, it's easy. Call 1-800-920-3084. Go online or visit a Target store today. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style or this, 
or maybe this. Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Stephanie Roberts. On Suncoast View, we learn about vitamin D deficiency and what can be done to keep our bones strong and healthy. Plus, we make earrings and oak and stone in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. Welcome back. We're talking about white supremacist leader Richard Spencer's appearance at the University of Florida today. And joining us for more is Michael Barfield of the American Civil Liberties Union, Howard Tevelowitz, the executive director of the Jewish Federation of Sarasota Manatee. And joining us from Gainesville is Sarasota resident Nate Quinn, who attended the protest, and our own Christopher Brantley. Howard, what would you do? Would you not allow Spencer to speak there? It's tough. Even coming here to sensationalize this guy is, was a hard decision to make. Um, look, on one hand, thank God we, again, live in this country where we can have freedom of speech. On the other hand, he's shouting fire. I mean, he's, he's shouting fire in, in a theater. There's something wrong. And it makes it very difficult for people like us in the Jewish community to have a, just a normal response to this. We've been through this a lot. Well, that was my next question. What do you fear in terms of the emotions and what you are seeing in terms of how people are talking to each other and, and the clashes that we are seeing and the violence we are seeing from time to time on our streets? Yeah, it's really difficult. Look, at, we've been through this now for over 10 years in the Jewish community. So we have it from the left and we have it from the right. Mm -hmm. And it's a very difficult thing to watch because we've lived through this from the left and from the right. Um, and we're watching it again and again and again. So it's very challenging not to step back and say something when we're seeing it from either direction. But unfortunately, in this country, we've watched it from the left for years. And it's been quiet and underground. With Richard Spencer, now it's coming out in a different way. So we're seeing the protests on campuses and other places. On the other hand, it's been quiet. So people, we've been called all kinds of names for years. And unfortunately, anti-Semitism, racism is raising its ugly head in this country one more time. Michael, there are people who are legitimately concerned that these protests and this language, a lot of people share the, 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 the thoughts. Uh, they may not go out there, but we're seeing it more and more. And it raises the possibility that uh, we could see increased violence attached to this kind of talk. Well, in my mind, people need to accept the fact that racism in this country never really disappeared, and that it's been apparent and under the surf, but, but under the surface for quite a long time. And shining a light on that, to me, is what uh, we need to do. Um, don't let's not pretend that that the Civil War ended. There are people in the South. I grew up in the Deep South that are still fighting it and shining a light on those dark corners of these people that would try to mislead people to me is the best remedy. When the government bans speech, when the government bans anything, when a parent bans anything, the natural curiosity of a person is to find it, that they, they could succumb to it. So we think that the best remedy for that is to shine a light on the racists that they are. Nate, let me ask you this, because you are a young person making their way throughout this world, and you are experiencing uh, uh, you know, people speaking out a lot about a lot of different issues right now. What is your greater concern in that community of, of Gainesville, which is really kind of a melting pot of Florida, in terms of how people are speaking to each other these days? My biggest concern is always the safety of you know, marginalized students on this campus. This is supposed to be a place for learning. We're supposed to be getting closer to our careers and, you know, making our lives as young adults. And instead, we're having to, you know, fight Nazis on campus and the speech that they bring with them. And we're having to interrupt our days and protest and find different roads to drive on. And, you know, it's like, 
the same speech that we were talking about in the 1930s has somehow come back and it seems even more vicious now and even more violent. What do you see on campus in terms of daily issues, in terms of intolerance uh, uh, from people who are maybe on the left or on the right or um, in terms of the way people talk to each other and, and whether people get threatened, whether it is out in the open or not? You know, within the past about two years on campus here, we've had quite a few hate crimes and individual Nazis showing up on our campus that really haven't been fought against from an administrational level. It's really been the students coming together, mostly students that are on the left, that come to stand up for themselves and for their peers. And I think that's a really beautiful thing, and that's going to continue to happen as we have these battles here in Gainesville. Christopher, let me ask you this. Uh, as you talk to protesters today, were more of them students at UF who went out there to basically speak their mind, or were the protesters mostly from the general area or even other parts of the state, including the Sun Coast? Definitely different parts of the state, definitely different parts of the community. Largely, though, it was UF students. We're talking a lot of people wearing gator uh, clothing as they're coming out here. You know, it was a mix of people. Of course, we did have members of the uh, Manatee County chapter of the NAACP. I saw people that uh, said they were from Jacksonville. Some people were from Miami. I mean, this was really an event that got a lot of attention, not just here, but really all across the state. And I would imagine, uh, given that this was trending on Twitter today, that this was really a hot topic across the country. Michael, let me ask you this, because as we reported earlier, uh, Richard Spencer has tried to deliver his, his hate message uh, at college campuses across the, the U.S. Some schools have turned him down and prevented him from going there. Uh, you know, when, we've, when you heard from the, the president of UF today, they said that they had no uh, legal, uh, you know, no legal option but to allow him to speak. Why does he feel that way? And obviously other schools can say no. Well, the University of Florida opened up speaking uh, halls, et cetera, to the public for a fee. They've done that for years. Most u major universities have done that. When you do that, the government university has to be neutral to all speech. It's an all or nothing approach, Alan. You either don't allow any speakers to come to your campus or you allow all of them. Most universities following Charlottesville have said, we're not going to bear the cost of providing the security, and we're going to just ban inviting speakers. It is for the taxpayers who are flipping mm -hmm. the bill for the that security is. there. That is. But th there are some benefits to this, to, to In my mind, there are benefits of, first of all, being aware, uh, letting people know and being aware that there are people out there spewing this kind of hatred and venom. Uh, and being aware and cognizant of that, to me, is the first defense uh, of what you can do. It has organized and galvanized people together to come together to speak against it. Spencer was clearly uncomfortable and rattled today by the responses that he got. He was jeered in public. And I think that's a victory for the First Amendment. Howard, let me ask you this, because you've all said that this has been an undercurrent for years and never really went away. But right. there has also been a lot of discussion that um, this kind of protest and this movement has been given a, a, a breath uh, of life in the last year or two. Look, the, you know, the simple answer is always yes. But the truth of the matter is, at least from a Jewish community perspective, this has been an undercurrent for probably 10 years on campuses. Um, from the left, speakers are coming in. They're shouting people down. Um, name calling um, is mostly against Jewish students. So it's been here for years. This is more of a newer phenomenon coming from the right. But again, it's there. And it's been in Europe for years as well. It's just kind of coming over the pond right now. So. Um, yeah. All right, we have to take a quick break, but we'll be back with final thoughts from our guests in a moment. Listen to this important message. If you owe money to the IRS, you will want to hear this. Penalties and interest compound daily on your back taxes, putting you under a mountain of debt. Tax 10,000 has years of experience connecting people with tax resolution specialists. 
Working through the IRS Fresh Start program, they will handle all the necessary forms, and if you qualify, you may end up saving thousands of dollars. Call Tax 10,000 at 800-817-1064. If anyone depends on you, listen to this important message. Three out of four Americans know they need life insurance, and many who have it know they don't have enough. Sound like you? How would your family get by without you? Would they lose their home or their dreams of a good education? They don't have to. You can guarantee those you love $200,000, dollars $750,000 or more with life insurance through AIG Direct. We're part of AIG, one of the world's largest insurance organizations, and we'll help you get more for your money, up to 70% more. Just look, less than $14 a month buys a 40-year-old man a $250,000 term life policy. That's up to three times what you can get from other companies for the same price. No wonder millions of people worldwide rely on AIG companies. The call is free, the quote is free, and there's no obligation. Get the protection your family needs through AIG Direct, a leader in insurance. For a free quote, call 1-800-620-6355. That's 1-800-620-6355. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door. A door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong. A place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Nate, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, I, I, let me put it to you this way. A lot of people who, when they write in, uh, when we do shows like this, they will say, why did you even give this Spencer guy the time of day to even devote an hour uh, to what he was trying to tell uh, people at UF? How would you respond to that? I think the big takeaway is that protesters are here to let Spencer know that he's not the majority. And we're here to build community with each other as marginalized people and just make sure that we are becoming a closer community and an inclusive community. And, and Christopher, what is your t takeaway in terms of how both sides dealt with what was a potentially combustible situation today? Oh, it could have gone just as sour as it began, <clears throat> excuse me, but it didn't. And the police are largely due credit to that in that they kept everything really uh, calm and peaceful throughout the day. You know, as a reporter, you walk into a situation like this, you just don't know which way it's going to go. And finally, Mother Nature played a huge role in it. It was a very overcast day. It started to rain at least three separate times, and each time it did, the crowd dispersed because they didn't want to get wet. Howard, are, do you have real concern that things are going to get out of control in terms of, of what seems to be happening more often in terms of the, this movement and this speech and the clashes between the right and the left. Yes, definitely. I think um, the Anti-Defamation League describes this perfectly, have hate will travel, um, and we're getting it from the left and the right, and there doesn't seem to be a tamping down on this. So definitely, I think we're going to see a lot more of this over the, the upcoming months. Well, Michael, you know, what's your reaction to that? Because we are living, you, you said that this, is, this has never gone away, but it's, it, it seems like it's more out in the open today than it was just a couple of years ago. Well, it's more out in the open because I think at the presidential level we have uh, uh, the communicator-in-chief twitting and talking, uh, making statements that are extremely unpresidential, that are... Uh, in my mind, racist and uh, sort of light that fuse or the people who might be of that persuasion. So I think it starts from the top and we, we, uh, we're stuck with that at, at present uh, for what it's worth. But I do think that there's a value in people seeing actual venom being spewed uh, for what it is. The, uh, the senses, the eyes, the ears will not misguide you to instinctually that this guy is um, full of hate. 
All right, we will have to leave it there. But before we go, we want to hear what some of you had to say about last night's topic, Governor Scott's emergency order on nursing homes. The governor ordered all Florida assisted living facilities and nursing homes to install generators after 14 senior citizens died in South Florida after Hurricane Irma knocked out the power. We asked you on Facebook if the governor is doing the right thing, and Lisa says, yes, this is a hurricane state. They should have had that in place from the beginning of time. Matt says 60 days is honestly too quick. We're not talking a little generator that needs to, the, the needs most have, but a very large generator that will require load planning and permits. Getting a permit is not an overnight process. And Michelle says if you can't comply, get a new business. Well, like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. FYI, you can watch past discussions. They're on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And want to stay up to date on the latest local news? We're proud to announce our new ABC7 My Suncoast News app. If you have an iPhone or an iPad user, you currently have our news app. You'll want to go to the App Store and download WWSB ABC 7 Tampa, My Sun Coast. It's free and it provides the most comprehensive news coverage for Sarasota, Manatee, Charlotte, Hardy, and DeSoto counties. Android users, no worries. You'll get the new version automatically. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Michael Barfield of the American Civil Liberties Union, Howard Teplowitz, the Executive Director of the Jewish Federation of Sarasota Manatee, and joining us from Gainesville, uh, Nate Quinn, who attended the protest, and our own Christopher Brantley. Thank you all. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather. Plus, White House Chief of Staff John Kelly speaks about the President Trump calling the families of fallen soldiers Stay with us. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Many people with Medicare may be able to get extra benefits and don't even know they're available. You may be able to get dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage included in your plan. Call the Medicare Coverage Helpline to see if you can get the extra benefits you deserve. The Medicare Coverage Helpline is now accepting calls. You may be able to get extra benefits, including dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Hi. I'm Dr. Jason Buckwald. Making sure you go to the doctor and taking all your medications as prescribed can help protect your health. To make it easier, you may now be able to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that includes coverage for dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Help protect your health by choosing the right plan for you and get all the benefits you deserve. Call to see if you may be able to get extra benefits, including dental, vision, and prescription coverage. Don't miss the annual election period deadline for Medicare Advantage. Call now. Call 800-711-7200. That's 800-711-7200. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on the first alert forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, i got to tell you, on a beautiful day today, Lakewood Ranch again showing moderate conditions out there. A little bug right there, but nonetheless, uh, it was beautiful out there with a few fair weather cumulus clouds occasionally moving on by, and it looks as though we will see a uh, nice night, too. Fair skies in general up and down the coast and a little bit of rainfall along the east coast and down to our south along an old frontal boundary there, but not much going on here at all. It's going to stay quiet, too, overnight as this large area of high pressure continues to expand and head off to the southeast very slowly. It will give way eventually by the weekend to a frontal system that will move on down. Currently, it's 82, and the winds are out of the east-northeast at 10. The pressure 30.02 inches. That's high. That continues to rise ever so slightly. 
Well, if you like today, you're going to love tomorrow. It's going to be pretty much the same. Uh, high temperatures will top out into the upper 80s to low 90s. Plenty of sunshine around. No real mention of any significant rainfall. If we see anything at all, it'll be a brief sprinkler shower here and there. It'll push through pretty quickly, too. It'll move off toward the west as we see that easterly wind. The temperature forecast lows tomorrow will be unseasonably warm in the low 70s to mid 70s across the coast. A little bit cooler in places like Tallahassee. We'll start the day off in the low 60s. We'll start to see some of these uh, by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. <clears throat> but until then, uh, temperatures will stay into the upper 80s for highs on and through Friday and even into Saturday. Sunday, we'll look for upper 80s for highs too across the state for that matter. We'll start off in the low 70s though on Saturday morning under fair sky, so it should be a nice start with that easterly component uh, with the wind flow out of the east to northeast. Anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour, gusting as high as 20 at times. In the afternoon, uh, the winds will pick up a little bit more so, but we are anticipating uh, the winds to eventually shift more to a southeasterly direction in advance of that front, which will start to bring the humidity values up a little bit, especially on Sunday morning and on Monday morning. For our future cast showing not much going on here, all is quiet. Occasionally, a sprinkle or two pushing off to the west. The east coast will see a little bit more action, but not much at all. And then a little bit better chance for some showers and storms to move in and settle in on late Monday and into Tuesday. Well, that frontal boundary continues to weaken. Nothing going on in the tropics right now. All is fairly quiet at this point, looking pretty good on that front. Beach and bony weather looks like this. Northeast winds at 15 knots and seas will be 2 to 4 feet. A moderate chop on the bays and inland waters. The water temperature now at 82 degrees. UV index will be high tomorrow. If you're heading to the beaches, make sure you have uh, some sunscreen on, some protection as well. Uh, we are looking at uh, the tides, a low tide at 727. We just had that one. And the high tide will be at 1237, another low tide at 813. Forecast mostly fair, mild and breezy. Low temperatures, low 70s. Northeast winds 10 to 15. Now tomorrow looks pretty much just like today. High temperatures in the upper 80s. Warm weather and a slight chance for showers, partly cloudy skies. Northeasterly winds 10 to 15. The extended forecast is calling for a 20% chance for showers. That's it through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just a little bit more, but not so much. And then Monday is at 30%, and then better chances for scattered showers and storms come late Monday night and throughout Tuesday. Look at the cooler weather coming in on Wednesday and Thursday. Looking good. Alan Cohen will be right back after this with the headlines. Stick around. You studied hard, went to college, and achieved your dream, but it turned into a financial nightmare. If you have federal student loans and you'd like to reduce your payments, get more time, or have your loans completely eliminated, then we have good news. With one call to Student Loan Relief Services, you can find support and guidance. We've already helped thousands of people, and we can help you too. If you have $10,000 or more in federal student loans, you can qualify for payment extensions, payment reductions, or you may qualify to have your federal student loan completely forgiven. Call Student Loan Relief Services now to find out about your options. Take control of your finances and get out from under this burden. One of our student loan experts has the answers to your questions and great solutions to ease your financial burden. We're here for you. Call Student Loan Relief Services now. Call 800-759-0203. 800-759-0203. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Attention blood thinner users. 
Thousands of blood thinner users may have been exposed to serious risk by these dangerous medications. If you or a loved one took Xeralto or Pradax and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. If we don't win, there is no fee. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-554-3987. Again, that's 1-800-554-3987. Checking primetime headlines, White House Chief of Staff John Kelly speaking out today, saying he was stunned by the criticism President Trump faced over a call he made to the widow of a fallen soldier. A Florida congresswoman alleging the president told the grieving pregnant widow her husband knew what he signed up for. ABC's Janae Norman has more from Washington. Thanks, guys. Stunned and brokenhearted. That's how White House Chief of Staff John Kelly says he felt as headlines focused on a phone call President Trump made to the widow of a fallen soldier. A selfish behavior of a member of Congress. After waiting 12 days, President Trump called the families of the four special ops soldiers killed in an ambush in Niger. One of them, Maisha Johnson, the pregnant wife of Sergeant LaDavid Johnson, seen sobbing over her husband's casket. Florida Congresswoman Frederica Wilson was traveling with Maisha and her family as they headed to receive the sergeant's casket and says she heard part of the conversation on speakerphone when President Trump told the grieving widow he knew what he signed up for, but when it happens, it hurts anyway. And in his way, tried to express that opinion. He's a brave man, a fallen hero. He knew what he was getting himself into. That was the message. That was the message that was transmitted. It stuns me that a member of Congress would have listened in on that conversation. Absolutely stuns me. Earlier this week, President Trump fired back at Congresswoman Wilson, tweeting that she totally fabricated the story. But Sergeant Johnson's mother corroborated Wilson's account of that call, telling The Washington Post, President Trump did disrespect my son and my daughter and also me and my husband. You heard that? Yeah, he said that. That's so insensitive. So insensitive. Congresswoman Wilson responded to today's briefing, saying this back and forth with the White House has, quote, gone too far. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. The suspect in the shootings in Maryland and Delaware that left three people dead and three others injured is in custody. Authorities say 37-year-old Radi Labib Prince is accused of shooting five people at his job in Maryland yesterday morning. Police say he shot a sixth person about two hours later at a Wilmington, Delaware car dealership. Prince was caught in Newark, Delaware last night. You'll remember what happened 30 years ago today. It was October 19, 1987, that the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 508 points, or more than 22 percent of its value. A presidential task force report on the crash said more than $1 trillion in wealth was lost. Following the crash, the New York Stock Exchange introduced circuit breakers that halt trading due to the extreme drops. And that is all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us and have a good night.